India's equity markets are posting solid gains. We are at fresh lifetime highs. Nifty is about 13,650. The Sensex uh, is well strongly above 46,500. We've come a long way from those March lows that we witnessed. The Nifty has rallied almost, um, I think, 50 to 60 odd percent from those levels. So great recovery, lifetime high levels, in fact, something that we had not seen even prior to COVID. But the question, of course, is that um, is your mutual fund portfolio reflecting this? We invest in equity mutual funds so that um, it's, it's a great way to really um, get the earnings and, and you know, the, the moves rather uh, seen in the Nifty, the Sensex and various other indices. Um, you know, in our own portfolio. But many a times it happens that investors are pretty disillusioned when they see what's happening with the benchmark indices and then when they look at their own portfolio. So what should you do in such a situation? We have with us, excuse me, Prableen Bajpai, the founder of FinFix. Prableen, thank you so much for joining us today on ET. Now, it's a pleasure having you with us on The Money Show. To start with Prableen, um, like I mentioned, many investors may be feeling a little disillusioned. I'm not sure how many of your clients may have, you know, called you, um, uh, you know, worried, asking you about the same, about what they should do. Um, but yeah, why do you think this happens where you have certain mutual funds that just simply don't do well, even though the market is skyrocketing, just like we are seeing now. The whole of December, we've seen the markets move only one way, except for that one day when there were a few losses. But otherwise, it's literally been a one-way journey. Right. Uh, good evening, Mabina. Thanks for having me on the show. I think that's a very, very relevant question. And, uh, you know, when we see uh, new highs on uh, channels like yours uh, every day, investors are definitely, you know, this question comes to their mind that, uh, you know, why are our mutual funds not probably reflecting the same kind of returns? Uh, so I think uh, it's very important to understand here how mutual funds are constructed. Uh, so, Mubina, even if we see uh, the Nifty, you know, the index as such, it's got 50 stocks, right? And within those 50 stocks also, it's not that all the 50 stocks actually go up at or go down, uh, you know, by the same magnitude or the same percentage and at the same time. So it's very interesting that uh, when we see Nifty, it's basically an average of how these top 50 stocks are doing. Likewise, you know, even a mutual fund portfolio is basically only going to reflect uh, the performance of the stocks that it owns. And uh, a certain mutual uh, fund may or may not be, uh, you know, owning the stocks which have actually uh, outperformed or which are doing very well in the markets. I'll give you an example here. Uh, let's pick, uh, you know, Nifty, uh, and it's got these four banking, uh, you know, companies there, SBI, HDFC, Kotak, and Axis. And uh, Kotak and HDFC are year-to-date up by about 16% and 9.5%, but SBI and Axis are down by about 19% year-to-date. So within Nifty also, these, you know, four stocks have performed differently, uh, so mutual funds now based on, you know, what their composition, it would reflect, uh, you know, the respective performance of the portfolio of stocks that uh, the fund manager has created for them. Uh, so that's the primary reason that, uh, you know, your uh, mutual fund cannot uh, replicate uh, the performance of what we see of the broader indices. And... Uh, this is again one reason why index funds have sudden, uh, you know, suddenly uh, been fancied a lot because uh, uh, index funds are able to, uh, you know, replicate what the broader indices actually uh, show or are performing. Uh, so that's the major reason. Uh, and that is why investors have to understand that underperformance may not necessarily mean that uh, the fund is bad. It's just that the stock holdings are different and they have to judge it uh, against the benchmark uh, that the fund is set up against. Okay. And what um, if you, I mean, like you mentioned, like every mutual fund would have a certain benchmark. In fact, you open the fact sheet and they will write then and there tell you how the fund is performing or rather what the returns of a fund were in a particular time period versus the benchmark. Um, what would be a, a telltale sign of sorts, um, uh, you know, uh, that, okay, this mutual fund has consistently not been performing? Do you probably look only at the returns bit of it or are there some other parameters as well on the basis of which you decide whether a mutual fund is doing well for you and your portfolio or not? 
Okay, uh, so Bobina, again, uh, see how these uh, portfolios are constructed. Let's uh, let's just take the example. I'll just give a sectoral example first of uh, you know the healthcare sector, which has done uh, you know amazingly well during this COVID uh, time, 2020. But the same uh, index, if we look at the BSc healthcare, it was actually down by about 13% in 2016. It was you know flat in 2017. 2018, it was down by about 6%, and 2019, it was down by about 4%. And these were the times when Sensex, the broader indices, were, uh, you know, it uh, absolutely out uh, was, uh, you know, up by uh, 2%, and then 2017, it was up by about 28%. So, year wise, this is a year wise comparison. Now, uh, you know, gradually what happened, let's say a fund manager is looking for some, uh, you know, when they look at valuations, they find opportunity. These, uh, you know, stocks which have not been performing well they obviously have a very attractive uh, you know valuation and you know fund managers accordingly pick and construct a portfolio now it has so happened that 2020 uh, you know the pharmaceutical or the healthcare index has uh, totally zoomed and all those fund managers or those stock uh, schemes for that matter have been you know wonderfully rewarded because uh, this particular index is up by about 57% so first of all, uh, it's very important to understand that when we are reviewing a portfolio, it also has to be in a you know broader context. We have to understand what is the broader situation in the economy, why uh, probably certain sectors in 2020 have not performed at all. And it may be, you know, by chance, it's not totally skill always. It's also a bit of luck factor, which is there, uh, which may have led to the underperformance. But broadly speaking, uh, Mobina, when we are looking at whether your fund is underperforming or whether there has to be a red flag, uh, any investor should compare returns over a four to five year period uh, in comparison to the benchmark index, which the fund has been, you know, set up against as well as the category average. So let's say we are talking about the mid-cap category and we pick a certain fund, let's say DSP mid-cap or Axis mid-cap, and we are looking to judge its performance. Then that has to be done uh, by checking its performance against its benchmark as well as the category average. And the red flag should be uh, in those funds where the fund has underperformed both the category average as well as its benchmark, in cases where the fund has been able to outperform its category average but underperformed the benchmark, uh, investors can you know stay put. Likewise, if it has outperformed the benchmark but underperformed the category average, again they can stay put. So that's one criteria of reviewing you know uh, whether your fund is uh, underperforming. Uh, second, uh, they can also check whether the returns that that fund is giving. Uh, you know, how are they placed as compared to the kind of risk that fund is taking? And that can be reflected, that is reflected by the standard deviation of the particular scheme. So uh, investors can do a comparison with that, that whether the riskiness of the fund has increased over a certain time period. Uh, another very important factor here, uh, Movina, would be to see that uh, when we are, uh, you know, evaluating a certain fund, uh, again, is it a thematic fund? Is it a value fund? A value fund would always uh, show underperformance as compared to the broader indices. So, uh, you know, these broader criteria have to be uh, uh, taken into account while uh, analyzing how your own mutual funds are doing. Okay, very interesting. So, you know, you've mentioned quite a few parameters that you would look at. I want to specifically ask you that what are the red flags? Um, you know, for, just to, you know, put this into perspective, um, we know what happened in April with Franklin, uh, the debt funds, which are still, of course, in a limbo. Uh, we, investors still don't know whether they'd be able to get the money. Uh, redemption has been stopped. It's now, you know, the process is sub uh, There's going to be a round of voting, so on and so forth. Um, that's, of right. course, a debt fund. Um, so, I'm going to encompass debt and equity funds. What were the telltale right. signs, you know, in the Franklin case? And how can we sort of take those lessons and apply them for the overall, you know, for, for our overall mutual fund uh, portfolio? Right. So, uh, uh, Mubina, again, these are, you know, two different categories. So, if you're just talking about debt and if somebody wants to evaluate their own debt fund portfolios uh, as on date, 
the first thing that they should see is the credit rating you know uh, how much is the riskiness in the portfolio how much triple a how much double a how much uh, you know single a uh, securities that uh, particular debt fund is holding so that's the credit risk uh, you know that reflects how much credit risk that particular fund is taking and somebody who doesn't have a high risk appetite uh, should definitely go in for a debt fund which is broadly into triple a or sovereign holdings second uh, 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 you know mechanism to check how a debt fund is uh, you know what kind of risk it has it also comes uh, through the interest rate risk you know changes in the interest rates in the economy so what is the modified duration of a particular debt fund the longer the modified duration the more will be the impact of any interest rates uh, that take place in the economy so uh, if somebody has to evaluate the debt fund uh, as on date and uh, they have a fund which is they're planning to invest and that is let's say with a 3 year horizon uh, so what will happen is any change in the interest rates let's say it starts going down further the impact on a fund which has a 3 year duration will be more than a fund which has a shorter duration of let's say 6 months or 3 months or 1 year uh, so that's broadly for the debt fund so you see the credit quality and then you see the duration the longer the duration the more will be the impact of any interest rate changes uh, likewise for equity uh, somebody can look at the standard deviation what is the riskiness of the portfolio and i think uh, because uh, with an equity is mobina what happens is that uh, see one man just take their own calls uh, 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 different sectors perform in different time periods and uh, it's unfair to judge any equity fund in a very short time period so it's very important to see how broadly it's performing as compared to the category average and its benchmark over a period of time i think that's the you know broader in the easy mechanism for an investor to review his or her own portfolio okay i think that's that explains it um, really well prableen and and i think the important part is also that uh, prableen i'm sure you'll agree with me that investors really need not panic um uh, you know many a times and and very often i get these questions as well on on our uh, the money show email address saying that xyz fund has not been performing and you know i'm really disappointed uh, why is it that it's not performing should i redeem um these last few months as well we've been seeing a lot of investors um redeem their mutual funds more than they invest in them um of course it could perhaps have to do with, with maybe a cash crunch situation that some of them may still be in but um it's also got to do with the fact that maybe you know they've looked at the markets they're seeing that it's at lifetime highs and so i guess it's like an opportunity of sorts for them to uh, you know take some money off the table reap those profits so on and so forth so probably at what point then uh, would you recommend that investors be patient with the fund that look uh, you know this fund is just having a small rough patch because of course probably every fund and every asset class cannot consistently keep uh, you know doing well it will have its phases of lows it will have its phases of um, uh, you know gains the important point is of course on a net net basis uh, gains are more than losses so um, you, in what cases would you ask investors to just be patient and hold on okay uh, mobina so i'll give you an example here so if we pick up data from 2015 uh you know uh, when nifty was at around 9000 uh the returns in the five year period till about 2020 would have worked out to be about uh, you know 11 to 12% cagr and uh, by march when the markets uh, you know uh, really tanked in markets uh, i mean across the board all the stocks in markets were down uh, the cagr ended up to be just about uh, 3 3.5% uh so if the same uh, fund was reviewed in march of 2020 the returns looked very different the same fund was reviewed in march of 2020 the returns looked very different and by uh, november the same returns had come up to about 12% cagr again so i think uh, the question on exiting uh, should not only be dependent on the underperformance yes if your fund has been underperforming consistently uh, you know against its uh, benchmark as well as the category average i think it's uh, you know it's time to take a call 
and uh, move out of the fund because there is always an opportunity cost involved there. Other than that, I think one should also review the overall riskiness of a portfolio. Has there any? Uh, has there been any change in the way these funds are run? And uh, you know, how is your overall portfolio? How much is the risk in your overall portfolio? So let's say over a period of time, you've ended up accumulating three or four small cap funds, and that's not uh, your kind of risk appetite, which you should be taking. Uh, you know, that is also another time when you should be exiting uh, uh, probably two of those funds. Uh, then another point when you should exit, uh, uh, you know, from an equity fund is also when you want to rebalance your asset allocation. If you feel that, you know, your funds have uh, given good returns, there has been a run up, you might want to exit from certain, uh, some of them and, you know, rebalance and correct your asset allocation. Uh, other than that, uh, Mobina, it would also be dependent on certain, uh, you know, events in the economy. So for debt funds, for that matter, uh, you know, how your interest rates are going up or down, what's the inflation based on those calls, you know, one may take a call to exit a certain or enter a certain category of debt funds. And uh, I think lastly is also the regulatory change. So just the way, you know, multi-cap funds have now, uh, you know, there has been a change of mandate. And... Um, uh, the flexi cap funds have come and most of the multi cap funds are now moving into the flexi cap category. Let's say some funds are not doing that. That would also change the you know overall uh, way that the fund is managed and investors should be careful with that and uh, if required they need to you know exit a certain fund. So their overall uh, uh, you know allocation should remain the same how much risk they can undertake that has to be measured and it should not consistently go up the riskiness of the portfolio has to remain the same and other than that of course i think exit calls have to be taken based on your you know financial goals and uh, slightly before your financial goals so that you are not waiting till the last day to exit from equities at least so a broader four or five aspects you know based on which one can take us uh, an investor can take a call to exit from a mutual fund All right, excellent. Well, I hope this provides a guidance for all our viewers. Um, you know, we are, of course, approaching the end of the year as well. And it's a great um, a point, uh, you know, during the year to sort of review your mutual fund portfolio, see how they are doing. So um, I hope this provides a great guidance as well for all our viewers on checking in with their <clears throat> mutual fund portfolio. Okay, well, time to answer some questions and queries we've received from our viewers. Folks, if you would like to connect with us, you can email us on themoneyshow at etnow.tv. So for now, let's take on board some questions we've already received. Uh, Mohit Gupta says, I have invested 25 crore rupees, that's quite a large sum, in the ICICI Balance Advantage Fund in spite of net equity uh, being 47%. Okay, I'm not sure if he mean what exactly does this mean. I think what he means is that the 47% uh, of the fund is in equities. Now he says that if my if the market goes down by 20%, my NAV will be down by 10% for sure. So he wants to know should I move to debt funds owing to equity market the risk of the equity markets falling? Well, move it for now. The equity markets are up, but what you are essentially trying to do is. Um, sell right now anticipating any possible future correction in the equity markets so firstly um when we invest in a balanced advantage fund be it with any mutual fund house problem um is it necessary for uh, you know investors like mohit and how mohit is doing to time the market in such a manner and accordingly keep switching his investments and yes not to mention mohit has kept a very large amount uh, of course not sure that this is the only investment or he has other mutual funds as well would have liked to know about his overall portfolio so you know the whole estimate could be made or rather um, you know an assessment could be made looking at it in a more holistic manner uh, but yeah probably what's your view uh, so, yeah, Mubina, ideally, uh, you know, you enter or invest in the dynamic asset allocation or the balanced advantage category uh, so that uh, you don't have to do that part of moving from equity to debt or debt to equity. That's taken care of by the way the fund is constructed. So, uh, ideally, the investor doesn't need to do that, but Mohit has a very high allocation. And um, he mentions that, you know, 47% of uh, the fund is invested in uh, equity currently and i think uh, this is as of november 30th and latest figures i think for 15th of december uh, this has probably come down to about uh, 43% uh, if i'm correct 
So, uh, but the impact still would remain uh, the same if we do see a 20% um, you know, fall in the markets. Now, whether we would see that kind of a fall or not, that's uh, you know, very hard to say. But I think how Mohit can probably take a call uh, you know, decision is based on his overall, you know, it's a very huge sum. So what is his overall asset allocation? Does he have the appetite to digest that kind of a fall if it does happen? Uh, if he has that kind of an um, you know appetite, well and good, stay invested. But if he wants to protect his returns and if he's happy with the kind of returns that he's already made, and with such a huge sum, the taxation part uh, also needs to be considered. So probably he has to you know uh, uh, take into consideration what kind of a taxation impact is going to be there because uh, there is no mention of when uh, the money was invested. So based on the holding period, the taxation liability, uh, if he has any specific goals or was it for wealth creation, how much uh, money has already been made, uh, you know, he has to take a call to probably partially redeem, uh, you know, some book partial profits. And uh, this can be done, you know, in a go or probably through a STP into a debt fund. And, uh, uh, you know, that's broadly what he can do. Uh, but you know, for a regular investor, I feel that, uh, you know, you need not time the, uh, this particular category because uh, this category takes care of the volatility in the markets on its own. Uh, this particular fund has uh, gone down to about 36% in equities uh, when markets, uh, you know, have peaked. All right. Okay, you know what? We are actually a bit short on time, so we'll have to end our okay. question and answer session right here. Don't worry, folks. We'll be here uh, all week on ET now to help you out uh, with your queries. Uh, Prableen, it's a pleasure having you with us. Thanks so much for joining in today on The Money Show. And remember, folks, you can, of course, catch this entire conversation on ET Now's YouTube channel under The Money Show playlist.